In this episode, we will adjust the colors a little bit more. First, let me show you how I achieved the looks that I showed you in the previous episode. That's the technique that I like to use the most. So I first add the RGB curves node, and this will be used just to set the initial black level and white level. I mute this and sample the black level, white level, and that's it. Now I will use the second RGB curves node to adjust the gamma. Then I add the color balance to play with the colors. I would like to adjust the color of the sky. When I left click the sky and check the RGB values, I see that the red channel green and blue are rather low. It seems that the sky will be influenced the most when I adjust the lift. So let's push the lift to the blue color. Let's zoom in a little here. Let's say that that's the color that I like. So now I will do something that may seem not logical. When I find the color that I like, I'd like to push it a little bit further. I do it because I know that I will not only adjust the lift, but also the gain. And as a rule of thumb, when we push the lift to some direction, we should pull the gain to the opposite direction, which means that the effect achieved by pushing the lift will be toned down a little bit by pulling the gain. The sky seems a little bit too dark. Let's brighten it up a little bit. We may come back to the previous adjustments. And we can even go all the way back to initial white and black levels and maybe increase the saturation of the white level to get rid of this yellowish tint of this building. What I am doing here adjusting the white level may seem counterintuitive. I want to get rid of the yellowish tint, so I push the white level to the yellow. I make it more yellow to get rid of the yellow. Now it's just a matter of tweaking all of those values. So that's the first look. Let's now see what happens if we kind of turn those wheels. So let's maybe move this point somewhere here and this one to the opposite direction. And we have a little bit different feeling. Or something like this maybe. Or exactly opposite. But I feel that the first approach, the first look was the best. This all may be achieved using the RGB curves node only. I don't say that it's easier, but it's possible. It may seem that it's impossible because we changed the colors, but here in RGB curves, we have the access not only to the overall levels, but also to the individual channels. Here we can adjust the red channel, green channel and the blue channel. So if we take a look at the colors that we used as the lift color, gamma color and the gain color, we can make the exercise to try to recreate this using the RGB curves. For the lift, the red channel is lower than one, the green channel is a little bit lower than one, and the blue channel is a little bit higher than one. So let's do this to the red channel, this to the green, and this to the blue. Gain we need to increase the red and green and decrease the blue. Increase the red, increase the green, and decrease the blue. Gamma is completely neutral. So let's compare. This is color balance, and this is trying to recreate the same using the RGB curves. You see that I didn't achieve exactly the same result. But if I tweak this a little bit more, it is possible. Now, just for fun, let's try another exercise. I will try to make the initial adjustments to this image. This also comes from Ari Alexa. I will try to adjust this image initially without looking at the image, using only the scopes. 
So let's try to do it. I don't have any chance to sample the image. Let's add the RGB curves node. Let's lower the factor to be more precise, 0.3 let's say. And now I will individually set the lift value of the channels. Red channel, let's zoom in here, take a look at the waveform and move this point like this. Now green. like this and blue like this. Now the highlights but let's use another instance of RGB curves because here I'd like to use the factor of 1 so red channel green channel and the blue channel Let's now try to add another RGB curves, drop it here and looking at the waveform, let's try to increase the overall contrast. We will lower the gamma, but at the same time we will increase the highlights of it. And this is what we get without looking at the image. Let's take a look. That's the original and that's our result. I think that I did a pretty good job especially that I didn't look at the image while adjusting. But this was just an exercise, so let's try to make it look a little bit nicer. Those trees or bushes should definitely be green, right? When we look at the values of those colors, we see that they are pretty low. So let's add the color balance, drop it here, and try to adjust the lift color. That's the color that I like, so let me push it a little bit further. Because now I will tone it down by adjusting the gain color. As you can see, the area that is influenced the most is this area. When I reset this color, you see that this one is yellowish. And we would rather have some complementary colors. So that's why when we push the lift to one direction, we should tone down the effect by pulling the gain to the opposite direction. As you can see, in most cases, I don't even touch the gamma color. But here, let's try to push it a little bit towards yellow. I like this balance. When we look at the image and see this point, it seems that it's completely white. But that's because of the surroundings. Let's check the values of this color. As you can see, red, green and blue channels are as low as 0 0.6, 0 0.5 or 0 0.7. But it feels that it's a very bright color. And the same applies here. This color may seem a little bit overexposed, but when we take a look at the values, we see that only the blue channel exceeds 1, and not that dramatically. So those were just the basic examples of primary color correction. Let's now try to separately treat certain color ranges. We will try to use the hue correct effect, but before I do it, let me show you the hue saturation value. When we move those sliders around for hue, saturation and for value, we change the whole image. But this will change the image in a completely different manner than the ones used so far. We used the RGB curves and color balance, and those effects change the channels separately. The red channel was changed independently from the green one and blue one, but this effect changes the red channel, taking a look not only on the original red channel, but also at the blue and green channel of the same pixel. When we change the hue, it's like turning around the wheel. So we do something like this. Hue of 0.5 leaves the image untouched. Saturation boosts the colors. We increase the saturation and we have more colorful image. When we decrease it, it's becoming more black and white. Value changes the feeling of the brightness. But this changes all of the colors of all of the pixels. But there is an effect that allows us to separately treat certain color ranges and this is 
hue correct. And as you can see, we can change the hue of a certain colors, like let's change the hue of the greens. As you can see, the fence changed, but the bushes did not, because they are more yellow than green. So they will be influenced more when we change the location of this point. So this is how it works. Here we can adjust the hue. Here we can boost the saturation of certain areas or decrease the saturation. You see that when I moved this point, I changed this area. So as you can see, there are some possibilities, but it requires a little bit of practice to be able to use this effect efficiently. In most cases, it's better to try to create the mat for the certain area and then use it as the factor for certain effects. But this is something that I will talk about in one of the next episodes. Let's now take a look at some other techniques that we can use to adjust the looks of the image. We may try to use some fake photo filters or, or something like that. I will simply try to mix this image with some color. So I will use the color mix node. I will drop it here. This mixes the image with the white color with a factor of 100%, so it changed the image to pure white. Let's change the factor to something like 0 0.4, change this color to something like, I don't know, red, and try to lower this factor. The factor of 0 0.2 is a little bit too high, but I use such high factor to be able to choose this color more precisely. When I find the proper color, I will of course decrease this factor value. This uses just the mix blending mode. But let's see what happens if we change it to, let's say, color. Let's mute this to see before, unmute it. The change is very subtle. So let's increase this factor to 0 0.3, let's say. Mute it, this is before unmuted and this is after. Let's change this color to let's say something like this and in this case I would rather lower this factor before after. Another thing that we can do is to try to create the version of the image and mix it with the original. That's a technique that I use a lot. Let me show you the example. I will use the converter color ramp and let's drop the image here and take a look at it. It created the black and white version of this image. Let's change this point from black to something like maybe blue and this from white to let's say yellow and let's try to mix this one with this one. So I will add the mix node, take the original and plug it here, and take this one, plug it here, connect the mix node to the viewer, and change the factor to something like this maybe. Mute this to see before, unmute it to see after. Now let's adjust those colors. Let's change this one to this and this one to, let's say, this. Maybe make it a little bit darker. We may try to change the interpolation. Before, after. In case of this image, those techniques doesn't seem to work. So let's get rid of those nodes. And the only thing that I will try to do with this image is to change the color of this fence. So I will once again drop the hue correct and change the hue of this range. This way I make this fence stand out a little bit. So now let's practice those techniques on some other image. This one was shot on red camera and that's a piano so it's completely black and white. Let's first take care about the black level and white level.
adjust the gamma, I will do it using the same note. And let's now try to clean those bright areas using the color balance. I will only try to adjust the gain. And in fact, there is not much more that we can do with this image. So let's try another one. RGB curves. Muted. Choose the black point. White point. Unmuted. Adjust the gamma. and try to give this image some looks, color balance, and let's try something like this maybe. So that's all for this episode. In next episode I will go deeper into it, showing you more techniques, and trying to give you some more technical knowledge.